In this video, we're going to be talking about spectrum analyzers, why you need one, what they are, and how to use one. So what is a spectrum analyzer? And a spectrum analyzer basically allows you to visually represent radio frequencies and be able to see them in a visual way. So there's a couple of ways to view radio frequencies. One is the frequency domain, which we'll be looking at with a spectrum analyzer. And the other is with an oscilloscope, which we'll look at it on the time domain. We're not looking at oscilloscopes today, just spectrum analyzers. Um, maybe in the future we'll do one on oscilloscopes, maybe, I don't know. So a spectrum analyzer allows us to see radio frequencies in the frequency domain. You can see their frequency and you can see their amplitude. And you can see if they are modulating, basically. You see their bandwidth, all, all kinds of things. And we'll get into that here in a moment. But why would I need one? Why would you need one? Well, it could be for regulatory compliance. You might need to be doing inspections and FCC uh, required um, occupied bandwidth measurements or a AM NRSC measurement. So there's many reasons why you might need that for regulatory reasons. You could be using it for uh, interference hunting. It's a great tool for interference hunting, especially the portable versions. Um, you could be using it just to confirm the technical correctness of your station or of whatever you're measuring. Uh, it could also be used for lineup and alignment. We use that here in the satellite industry, the, looking at downlinks. We have another device that kind of gets us in the ballpark and the spectrum analyzer kind of helps us hone it in. Today I'm going to be using a rack mounted spectrum analyzer. There are portable ones, there are ones that are, you know, mounted in a rack like this. There's ones that are mounted in a rack in a back room, like the one I'm going to be showing you today that have multiple inputs. There's all different types of spectrum analyzers. Nice little portable ones, nice portable ones that have a display on them, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So we're going to look at the window here. I'm going to be using this rack mounted one with a computer interface to it. So let's take a look at this real quick. And I'm looking at satellite signals in our examples for today. So let's look at our window, kind of get a lay of the land. You'll see that it's broken up. There's a grid here. It's broken up into 10 divisions on the horizontal axis and 10 divisions on the vertical axis. These are reference marks to help you do some quick measurements. And if you know what your span is, you, you can kind of do some quick division and know how many, for how many megahertz or kilohertz or whatever it is per division. For our vertical, we are measuring it in decibels. In our horizontal, we're measuring in hertz or megahertz or kilohertz or gigahertz or whatever. The way that I have it set up right now is I'm going to set it up for 3 dB per division. You might need 5, you might need 10. Older spectrum analyzers might not be able to do 3. They may only be able to do, you know, like a 1 or a 5 or a 10 or something to that effect. But in our instance, we're going to set it to 3 because the signals I'm going to be looking at fit nicely on the screen. So my scale is 3 dB per division. Perfect. Now this yellow squiggly line that I have here on the screen, that is the RF signal that we're looking at. That's what we're measuring. And so you can see that it kind of has its ups and downs, peaks and valleys. And you know, it, you can see that it kind of goes from left to right. And there's like this sweeping kind of updating motion that's happening from left to right. So that's going to lead us into the first thing we're going to talk about with the initial setup is your resolution bandwidth. The resolution bandwidth is basically a, a filter window. We're looking at this whole big piece of RF. In this case, it's about one gigahertz of RF. And you have this window that slides across this span of one gigahertz right now. And as it goes across, it goes into each individual slice and it'll take, it'll read the RF in that one slice, plot it on the screen, move to the next slice, plot it on the screen and on and on down the road, down the spectrum that it goes. Now, what our resolution bandwidth is, is how wide that window is. So if you are looking at a very large signal, a wider resolution bandwidth is totally fine. But if you need to see things that are narrower, or if you have multiple things that are smaller next to each other, 
if your resolution bandwidth is too wide, you're only going to see one signal. You're only going to see the one big signal because that window only measures RF once in that window. If you have multiple signals in there, then you need to shrink that resolution bandwidth down so that way that window is smaller and that'll give you more points to be able to see. What we like to do here is set it for 30 kilohertz. Now, if you're doing an, uh, an occupied bandwidth measurement or an NRSC, the FCC has very specific uh, settings, very specific resolution bandwidth, span, etc., that you need to follow. So you should make sure that you understand that. And um, But for here, I'm going to set ours to 30 kilohertz. And you're going to see that because I'm looking at such a wide swath of spectrum, it's going to take a while for it to update it. Now you can definitely see this sweep in action. And you'll see that my overall signal level came down too because it's being a lot more accurate with what it's measuring. So we'll let it do its thing here and draw the plot on the screen. And we'll watch it. There we go. Almost to the end. All right, so this is now our spectrum. And our sweep is incredibly slow. We'll get there. Now, the next thing you may want to look at and change is your video bandwidth. And your video bandwidth really doesn't have any impact on actually measuring. But what it does is it smooths out the noise, if you will, in the vertical aspect of your signal. So we like to set the one here to one kilohertz. It's not too crazy important, but it does help you get a little bit more accurate with your readings. I like to have it a little bit narrower, a little bit smaller, so that way it looks nicer. Makes prettier lines on the screen. And again, you'll notice that our sweep is really, really slow. So let's, while this thing does its thing, let's talk about the next item, which is span. And span is how much spectrum you are watching, how much spectrum you're looking at. The bigger the span, the longer your sweep is going to take. See, it's still going. It's still trying to sweep this one gigahertz of, of spectrum. If you have a lot of spectrum to look at, Buckle up, because it's going to take a while for you to get through it. But if you only need to see a small amount, your sweep can be a lot faster. But your span is just how much spectrum you're going to be looking at. And so what we're going to do right now, I'm going to set this to 5 megahertz, because I don't need to be looking at so much. So 5 megahertz, not gigahertz. Now you'll see my sweep just got a whole lot faster. Okay, the next thing we need to look at is our center frequency. This is the frequency that we are really interested in. In this case, I'm going to set it to 976.3 megahertz, not gigahertz. Now, as you can see on the screen right now, we just see kind of the top of it. Well, that leads us into the next thing we need to do, and that's set our reference level. Now, the reference level is basically what the top line value is. And the lower that you set your reference level, the more sensitive the instrument is. So we're looking at, oh goodness, reference level. Let's set it for minus 75 dBm. Okay, that works. That gives us some healthy signal that we can look at. So the reference level now slides up. We can see our signal. I kind of like seeing this here. I kind of like putting my noise floor on one of the uh, divisions, one of the grid lines, just to make it easier for me to, to look at. But 
In this case, I'll leave it at minus 75. We just wanna make sure that our signal is not going over the top of the screen because then we can't really measure it properly and that our noise floor is not below the bottom of the screen. We wanna see everything. And that's, again, where your scale comes into handy. How many dBs per division, decibels per vertical division. Now we have our signal in the middle, our span is appropriately set, and we have our reference level set. So it's gonna give us plenty of space to work with and look at. So at the bottom part, I mentioned noise floor, you see where there's kind of this average noise where, where everything kind of rests, this line of signal. That's going to be our noise floor. And our noise floor is just kind of the common area where the noise of everything is. And then the peaks that we see here, those are our signal. Occasionally, you'll be chasing a higher noise floor. So you'll see your, your peak but then your noise floor seems to be higher than it normally does. So again, you would span out, try to see how wide this noise is, and that'll help you determine, is it something external? Is there an external source of noise? Is your equipment going bad? Is your measuring device improperly set up, et cetera, et cetera? It helps you diagnose things a little bit too as well. So we're looking at five megahertz of spectrum right here. I'm not really concerned about the signals that are on the left-hand side. There's nothing really on the right-hand side. I kind of want to see what's going on with my two that are right there in the middle. So let's shrink up our, our span. We'll go to two megahertz, and now you'll see that everything just got wider. Well, it didn't really get wider. We just basically zoomed in to that portion of the spectrum. So we have our carrier that's right there in the middle. We have this, this signal that's off to the left, and we've got some other little signals here off to the right as well. So before we move on, let's take a, let's kind of look at our signal here. And we see our noise floor that's there off on the left-hand side. And remember, we're at three dBs per division. So we'll go We'll look at this and we see one, two, three dBs from the noise floor up to the top of our signal that's there in the middle of the screen, that wider one. So let's see, that's three, six, nine dBs. Our signal's kind of halfway in between. So we'll say one and a half. Our noise floor is kind of halfway in between. So we'll add another three. So that's three, six, nine, 10, 11, 12, 12 dB from signal to the noise. Okay, that's okay. I don't really know exactly what I'm looking at here, you know, what my source is. We could be looking through a very long cable, blah, 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 blah. But anyways, for this example, we have a 12 dB signal to noise. The other tool that we're gonna bring in right now is called Max Hold. And it's basically another, this line, this yellow line is called a trace. So we're going to bring in another trace, and that's going to be max hold. So traces, max trace, and you'll see a red line just popped up. This red line is now representing the maximum that this signal has shown here. So we can sit here and watch it. We can let it run for a little bit, and we'll see if we're looking for intermittent signals that come up if we do a max hold if our sweep is fast enough we'll be able to see that while we may not see it on that yellow trace we'll see it on that red trace and your equipment might have a different color um, this older unit just has another green trace that shows up as its max hold but in this case it's red so if we were to let this sit here for a few minutes and build you'll notice that it kind of gets a little bit smoother than what we're looking at on the yellow trace. And that's just because we're looking at the maximum. It's a good way to have some diagnostic and to kind of see what's going on when you're not having to sit there and watch it actively. You can kind of come back to it in five minutes or whatever and see, oh, my noise floor came up or this signal just showed up in the middle or 
whatever. For an FM occupied measurement or an AM NRSC, you might be able to see spurious emissions. So let's say this is the center of our FM signal and we know out X amount of, of megahertz, kilohertz away from the carrier, which is the center, you see s signals coming up. That's not a good thing. Your transmitter's putting out spurious emissions and you need to kind of get that result. Not, not in the scope of this video, but just kind of one of those things. Uh, there's also a min hold trace that you can do. And that's the opposite of max hold. It shows you the minimum of what happens. So if you're waiting for a signal to cut out or drop out, the min hold will show you that it did drop out. So I'm going to leave those up here for a few minutes. Um, spectrum Analyzer is also really good for interference hunting. Uh, if you are using uh, like a log periodic, a small log periodic, or a Yagi, or uh, even better, a loop antenna. They have these little loop antennas for FM and UHF. And uh, in those cases, you're looking for the null. But basically, you can rotate this antenna around, hold it, rotate it around with your portable spectrum analyzer, and find where that signal is, take a bearing, move to another spot, significant amount of distance away, take another bearing, move to another spot, take another bearing, and that's triangulation. Interference hunting is fun. I, I had fun the few times I've had to do it professionally. And so, but we'll leave that for another video because that one's, that was a lot more fun. So that's kind of the basics of spectrum analyzers. And, you know, it's a great tool, but I do have to caution. Now, you, there are TV shows on right now that are showing the use of a Spectrum Analyzer, it's this really $30 little software-defined radio dongle that you can stick into your computer and attach an antenna to. And while that's cool and it has really cool visuals, it is not a professional device. It is not a professional measuring tool. So um, I would caution you and urge you not to use that in a professional environment. In a hobby environment, awesome, cool. Go for it all day long. But professionally, don't do it. Um, professional spectrum analyzers are built to reject RF, to reject self-created RF. Um, I, there was this one TV show, which I will not name. They're, what, they're using one of these cheapy little spectrum analyzers. And they're chasing this one signal on like 1.6 gigahertz. And more than likely, it's their own device causing noise and they can see it. I have a hard time with TV shows that use tools incorrectly. Anyways, back to spectrum analyzers. Now, most spectrum analyzers will allow you to save a screenshot of your plot for reference later, for proof, for diagnostic, for sending off to somebody else, etc., etc. But you can save a picture of it and put it on your hard drive, put it in an email, whatever you need to do. So again, that's the basics of spectrum analyzers. There's a lot of different companies out there that make them. Uh, this one is made by a company called LPT, uh, LP Tech. Uh, there's different ones from Enritsu, Avcom, um, Rodian Schwartz, um, all different kinds and all, all different manufacturers. So kind of look at, at them, look at their website, and most of them will show that they have different versions. And you can definitely tell if they're a professional company or a hobby company. At some point in your broadcast engineering journey, you will be using a spectrum analyzer. And I hope that I was able to kind of give you some quick basics on them and getting you up to speed with that. So, yeah. Anyways, thank you for being a part of this channel. Um, oh, here's that, uh, where is it? Here. Here's that other video I was talking about, talking about decibels and megahertz, kilohertz, etc. cetera. Um, and then there's another video that you might be interested in that's right here. So, yeah. Anyways, thanks for watching. Thanks for being a part of this channel. And until next time, stay safe, stay healthy, keep learning.